Hi, any quest here. The story starts with this dude and this chick going on a date. They got this crazy idea to jump into a hardcore river together, tied up and all so they can be together forever. But Dan Fate pulls a nasty trick on them because out of nowhere, this evil truck Cohen rolls up, smashing through the forest like a madman and takes them both out. Fast forward a bit, our main man Osamu wakes up and he's straight up mind blown by what he sees. This fine lady explains it ain't heaven, but she's a guide for peeps like him who end up in this world. She goes by Annette and she spills that Osamu got chosen and transported to this whole new world. A fearsome dragon flies by as Annette explains that this world is all dark and messed up, and Osamu's got to be the hero and bring some damn light to it. But Osamu doesn't see himself as no hero. He was just some regular dude trying to off himself with his girl. And now he's stuck in this strange ass world. Annette's getting ready to give him some motivational speech to make him want to be a hero, but she's straight up shocked when Osamu does his thing and ODs on some poison pills. Annette cleanses his body of the toxins, but Osamu says that she's just bothering him. Annette straight up demands that Osamu become a hero and fulfill his crazy mission of saving this messed up world. But Osamu is just looking for a way to stop living, so he keeps munching on the pills, but Annette reminds him that he's the freaking chosen one. Osamu fires back, saying he never asked to be chosen. But Annette drops the knowledge that Truck Kuhn is actually a truck from another world that does some selection stuff. Out of all the unhappy people in Osamu's old world, only the ones struck by Otherworld Truck Kuhn get a chance to redo their lives in this new world. It's like a freaking world transfer service from Annette's world. Getting hit by Truck Kuhn means he was feeling hella miserable in his old life, so he got this chance in the new world. Osamu finishes off popping some more pills and he's all pissed, saying that dumb truck messed up the happiest moment of his life, his plan to peace out. He straight up tells Annette they ain't got no right to decide who was unhappy. But from her perspective, she saved him from a life so damn miserable that he was ready to end it all. Annette eventually decides Osamu's whining ain't worth jack because he's bound to change his tune once he peeps his stats. Every single human brought to her world gets gifted with some crazy superhuman powers. But damn, she's shocked when she finds out Osamu's weak as hell. Dude's got only one measly hit point and he is also still poisoned even after she detaxed him. Annette straight up can't believe someone could be this weak, so she goes on a desperate search, hoping to find some special skill or badass ability in Osamu. And damn, she's horrified when she discovers he's got absolutely nothing. She's never seen such a weak otherworlder in her life. Sick as a dog, Osamu tries to bounce, but Annette stops him and finally admits he must have ended up in this world by mistake. She figures that he won't be able to survive in this world, and she's shocked when Osamu finally shows a bit of confidence. He straight up tells her that what she just said sounds more like his real life. Osamu explains that he's always been labeled a failure, no matter which damn world he's in. Annette apologizes again for the screw-up and asks him to stick around for a bit. This world's mad dangerous, filled with monsters and whatnot, so if his life's gonna be over the second he steps outside. But Annette's stunned when Osamu tells her not to sweat it because he's looking for his final resting place anyway. The reason she's so shocked is because Osamu is unlike anyone else she's ever met. Annette used to take pride in guiding otherworlders, getting all hyped up to meet them. But soon she realized how stuck up and full of themselves they were. She felt like all she did was kiss heroes' asses all day, so she shut herself off. But now her whole world's been flipped because Osamu is a whole different breed. Osamu gets ready to step into the dangerous new world, but Annette begs him to at least choose a profession first. Dude straight up declares he doesn't need a profession because he's born a Dan writer. And with that, he bids farewell to the girl with the beautiful ears. As he leaves, Annette dramatically declares that she finally gets it. The thing she's been waiting for all along was for this man to enter her life. Outside, Osamu realizes he can't read the writing in this world, but he knows there ain't gonna be any cafes for him to chill at. Suddenly, a voice pops into his head, announcing that he scored five experience points for discovering a new area. Osamu wishes that annoying voice would shut up because he's got migraines and all. But then an even louder voice declares that Osamu leveled up to level two. Just then, a tree comes crashing down and a girl screams as she gets attacked by a monster. She pleads with Osamu to help her because he's an adventurer, but Osamu just stares at her, thinking about how people in this world got some funky ear shapes. She keeps begging for his aid, but Osamu straight up asks for her permission to write a novel about her. Eventually, Osamu realizes that she actually wants him to save her, so he tells her to hold on a second. He half-heartedly tries to reach out to her, but ends up saying he can't reach out. She asks him to use a sword or cast a spell or something, but the monster grabs hold of Osamu too. All he says is that he can't breathe, and the girl explains that the tree is siphoning their life force. They only have a few minutes left before their lives are over, but Osamu says that's a damn good news. He finds joy in his final moments and says his goodbyes to the world. 
The girl begs him not to give up, but Osamu ain't responding at all. She's stunned that her life's gonna end in such a weird way, but she's even more shocked when the tree gets engulfed in darkness and explodes. Osamu, against all odds, is still alive, much to his disappointment. And that voice announces that Osamu dealt 300 damage with his poison. The girl is straight up blown away as this dude, in the midst of this epic adventure, takes down the monster by making it absorb his poison instead of his life force. Osamu levels up to level 3, and the girl wonders if he is poisoning himself. Then she starts wondering why he's fronting like he is weak when he is actually pretty damn strong. But Osamu explains that this kind of crap always happens to him. Dude wants to stop existing, but somehow he keeps surviving. He's tried off himself to the afterlife five times, but it never goes right. At one point, the girl has no clue why he's so down in the dumps, but she's grateful he saved her life, so she thanks him. She offers to take him to her house so he can rest, and he introduces himself. But when Osamu touches her hand, he's reminded of his girl Sachin and wonders if she ended up in this world too. The girl gets all pissed and tells him her name is not Sachin. She tries to drop her real name on him, but Osamu is already daydreaming about Sachin. The girl gets hella frustrated because he's straight up ignoring her, but he got a legit reason. Osamu just found a purpose to live in this new world. He goes over his last memory with his girl and declares that he's gonna find Sachin wherever she is in this world. His declaration ain't exactly what it seems because he wanna find her so they can commit double and live again. Meanwhile, Annette is praying to the god of her world, hoping they protect Osamu. She also wishing to meet him again someday, and her wish comes true when Osamu comes back. She couldn't be happier to see him, but she's straight up shocked when his new cat girlfriend is there too. Annette can't even believe he already has a girl by his side. But she keeps it cool because Osamu has a question. He wanna know if Annette met a girl named Sachin. Anna is straight up horrified to hear there's a third woman in the mix. Osamu bounces because Anna got no info on Sachin, but the cat girl reassures him he's gonna find her. She wanna swing by the castle town of Roth before hitting her house, but she is shocked when Anna appears, trying to stop them from holding hands. Annette thinking that's some shameless behavior, but the cat just wanna know why Anna tagging along. Annette is too shy to answer, so the cat figures it out. She must be in love with Osamu. Of course, Annette denies it and says it's just her job to protect the weak otherworlder. Being an otherworlder is why the cat realizes Osamu is so damn strong. But Annette says that he is actually weak as hell. The two start arguing about how weak he is, but the cat spills that Osamu killed a monster and saved her life. Annette is horrified because saving her life means they got close and she starts calling the girl a thieving cat. Right then, Osamu announces he found something dope, a real comfy bed. But it's actually a freaking coffin, and he tells the girls to wake him up when they reach the town. Osamu says goodnight to Annette and Tama. But the cat is all mad because that ain't her name. Osamu was already knocked out though and Annette shyly points out that he called her the right name. So Anna takes on the task of dragging Osamu in his coffin, but Tama wonders if that really her job as a clergy person. As they keep walking, Tama's getting fed up with driving that damn coffin around, so she tells Osamu to get out and walk on his own two feet. But there's no response and she starts worrying that Osamu might have actually kicked the bucket somehow. Annette checks his stats and Osamu seems to be fine, so he's probably just knocked out. They're pretty close to the castle anyways, so Anna asks Tama to suck it up a bit longer so they don't have to wake him up. Meanwhile, inside the coffin, Osamu's peacefully dreaming about his beloved Sachin. And no matter where she is, he's gonna find her so they can both die together. A while later, they finally reach Roth, the castle town. Anna and Tama open up the coffin to let Osamu out. Osamu takes a look around the town, and he's damn sure now that he ain't in the same world no more. But before they do anything else, Anna suggests they head to the castle and have an audience with the king, but they end up leaving the coffin right in the middle of the road. At the castle, King Thomas and his daughter Charlotte are happy to meet them. And since they gotta be dead tired from a long-ass journey, the king offers them all a place to crash in the castle chambers for the night. But before that, he wants to hear some of Osamu's pleasant experiences. Osamu can't think of too many pleasant things to talk about, but he did enjoy that coffin ride gear, so he tells the king he's gonna show him what it's like to sleep in a coffin. Out of context, that might sound like a threat and all, but Anna quickly switches gears and compliments Charlotte on how fine she looks. The king mentions that Charlotte's actually getting married soon, so he's looking for some advice about her suitors. Thomas calls for the dudes to be brought in, and that's when we meet the warrior Gomes and the wandering minstrel of love Otto. Lately, because of the wrath of the demon lord's influence, monster activity's gone through the roof, but Thomas is too damn old to handle it himself, so he decides one of these two fellas is gonna become Charlotte's husband and the next king of Roth. Problem is, Charlotte ain't too keen on the idea because she ain't picked a husband yet. That's why he's leaving the choice to a bunch of strangers he just met 10 damn minutes ago. He's making them choose between Gomes and Otto to marry Charlotte, 
But when the choice pops up, Osomu does the smart thing and says he's never met these dudes before. Charlotte's whole future depends on this decision, so it's stupid to trust a bunch of strangers with it. And if you do something like this without even thinking twice, then he ain't fit to be king. The king's left in shock, and after saying that, Osamu turns to bounce while Anan and Tama are frantically trying to apologize for Osamu's actions. They try to explain that Osamu's from another world so he can be a bit blunt sometimes. But the king says it's cool because he ain't the type to hold a grudge, and it seems like Charlotte's taken a liking to him. Later that night, while everyone else is knocked out, Osamu spends his time gazing out the window. So Anna gets up and asks if he's having trouble falling asleep. Osamu tells her he just never sleeps well. Anna wants to seize the moment to learn more about Osamu. So she asks him to spill about Sachin. But then she peeks a tail popping out from under Osamu's sheets. So she yanks off the covers and sees Tama snoozing on Osamu's thighs. She ain't having none of that shenanigans unless she's the one sleeping with Osamu. So she grabs a pillow and smacks Tama to wake her up. Tama defends herself, saying it's chilly and she's part cat, so it's totally normal for her to snuggle up to people for warmth. While Hannah and Tama keep going at it over this, Osamu gets up and dips out of the room because of all the ruckus. And as he steps into the hallway, he notices a dope-ass light. So he steps outside to peep the lake, and wouldn't you know it, Charlotte's chilling there too. When she spots Osamu, she invites him to vibe with her and enjoy the lake because it's a beautiful night. Osamu agrees, saying the place is so damn beautiful that it makes him feel like he wants to take a forever dive in the lake. Charlotte's shocked to hear him say that and asks if Osamu's got enough problems to make him one off himself. But from what Osamu's seen so far, Charlotte seems like way more trouble than him. After a bit of silence, Charlotte opens up to Osamu, spilling that she can't make up her damn mind about Gomes and Otto. Gomes just got to the castle, but he's already the most dependable soldier they got. And her dad believes in Gomes' strength, so she thinks she should probably go with him. But Otto has been her homie since they were kids, and whenever she felt down, he read her a song and played it to lift her spirits. She doesn't know if she should choose a hubby she loves or one who'd be the strongest king for her dad's sake. Osamu chuckles to himself and says Charlotte's hella kind for worrying about her dad's opinion this much, unlike Osamu who's tried to cancel his subscription to life multiple times, always causing problems for his family in the process, but he's never let someone else decide how he's gonna live his life. He thinks Charlotte should make a decision based on what she wants, and to do that, she gotta figure out her true desires. The next day, King Thomas summons Osamu and the crew back to the throne room. He apologizes for the inconvenience but says he's calling them there because Charlotte's finally made up her mind about who she's gonna marry. He wants them to be witnesses to her choice. Annette is convinced Charlotte's gonna pick Gomes because she's likely to put the kingdom's needs before her own. Tama, on the other hand, thinks Otto's a way better match for her. Thomas tells Charlotte to walk up to the man she's chosen and speak her vows to him. So Charlotte starts walking, but instead of going to Otto or Gomes, she grabs Osamu's hand and says she wants to drown in the lake with him. Nobody can believe your ears, especially Annette, who collapses to the ground. Charlotte goes on to explain her reasons, saying that after talking with Osamu last night, she thought long and hard about who to choose, and that made her realize something. At first, she was leaning towards picking Otto because he always sang to her when she was feeling down. But now she remembers he'd sing to her even when she wasn't sad. He was even singing last night, and he never said he was in love with her. So he probably just wanted to perform his latest song for someone, and Charlotte happened to be there to listen. And as for Gomes, he's a no-go because he stinks something fierce. The king straight up be asking Charlotte to think again and choose a Dan husband. But that's some crazy ass shit to worry about because she already said she wanted to die with Osamu. Charlotte ain't taking none of that and snaps back at Thomas, telling him it was a dumbass move to force her into marrying someone without even asking for her opinion. Like she never even wanted him married in the first place. Thomas never took a moment to consider her Dan feelings, but of Samu, he actually gave a Dan about what she thought and respected her decision. Now, Osamu is why Charlotte picked his ass, but before he can respond, Gomes takes off his helmet and says he never would have thought his cover would get blown because of his stench. Then he transforms to his true form as a servant of the Dark Lord and starts spilling that he planned to snatch up this kingdom by becoming its king and handing it over to the Dark Lord. But that shit's all ruined now that Charlotte saw through his disguise. Osamu looks at Charlotte and asks if she figured out Gomes was a freaking demon, but she ain't got a freaking clue. She just said he stank because he really does stink. That means Gomes blew his cover for no good reason, but he ain't ready to admit he messed up. Now that his cover's blown, he says he'll just kill them all. This is the kind of situation where a badass priestess would be hella useful, but she's still knocked the hell out. Tama tries to wake her up while Gomes is busy dealing with the guards. But day and the guards ain't lasting long, so Tama has gotta grab Annette's body and bounce to avoid getting squashed by a freaking pillar. Since Annette won't be waking up anytime soon, Tama takes matters into her own hands and starts throwing down with Gomes. She's level 14, so she should be able to hold her own in a fight. 
And since she'll go against him, Ada offers to play her a song because he's rocking at level 89. Normally, it would give her a boost, but turns out Otto's just playing his freshest track, and it ain't got no special effects, but Osamu seems to be liking that hood classic song. Tama ain't got no other choice but to start whooping ass on her own. As Gomes charges at her, Tama ducks and lands a kick straight to his face. She follows it up with a cat punch, but it doesn't do much damage to Gomes, so he sends Tamo flying in return. He then says he's going to put everything into his next attack and tear Tama to shreds. But before he can do that, Osamu grabs his attention and asks Gomes to eliminate him and Charlotte first. Gomes thinks Osamu's playing around, but Osamu tells him that now that Charlotte's free from her dumbass father's grip, her first wish is to go out with a bang alongside Osamu. And Osamu ain't one to pass up a chance to die, so he asks Gomes to do him this favor. Gomes agrees to off him, but he says after that he's gonna take out the king and burn the whole damn city to the ground, taking out everyone in it. Osamu doesn't give a damn about what Gomes does because he'll be dead by then anyway, but Charlotte's starting to have second thoughts about biting the dust. As Gomes charges at them, she tells Osamu that she can't let herself die just yet because she wants to stay alive and protect the kingdom. Osamu's glad to hear that Charlotte finally knows what she really wants. Just when she wants to stay alive, he pushes her out of harm's way and takes the full brunt of the attack himself as Gomes keeps charging straight at Osamu. Charlotte tries to convince him not to get himself impaled, but luckily, right at that moment, Anna wakes up and uses her power to create a shield of light to protect Osamu from Gomes' strike. She's vowed to never let Osamu die as long as she's by his side. So as Gomes tries to break through her shield, he ends up shattering his Dan horns in the process. Now that Gomes is defenseless, Tama lands a blow that sends him flying through the castle wall and into the freaking lake. Both Tama and Annette are relieved they made it through, and since Anna really came through for Tama, Tama feels the need to show her some appreciation. Annette also thanks Tama for her help, and the two of them seem to be getting along a whole lot better now. And Otto is still here, playing his heart out like he doesn't have a care in the world. Charlotte's got a lot to process after that crazy incident, but then her dad rushes up to her, begging for forgiveness for not giving a damn about her feelings before. Osamu was right about Thomas not being fit to be king, and now Thomas realizes he ain't even fit to be Charlotte's father. So he sincerely asks Charlotte if she's willing to forgive him. Charlotte gets down and tells her old man that she forgives him. And from now on, she wants to have a lot of talks with him about the future of this kingdom and their own selves. Thomas is mad happy that he made amends with Charlotte, and Charlotte's thrilled her pops finally gets where she's coming from. But all Osamu can think about is how Anna and Tama messed up his perfect chance for a game over. A while later, Thomas admits he ain't cut out to rule the kingdom, so he gives up the throne to Charlotte, who's now doing everything in her power to keep the kingdom safe. And Otto's still cooking up tunes because he ain't got nothing better to do. Meanwhile, Annette and Tama are busy hauling Osamu's coffin to their next stop, chatting about how bold it was for Charlotte to become queen at 16. But they're sure it's gonna work out somehow. Osamu pops out of the coffin and says what really matters is that Charlotte made the decision for herself and she's standing by it, and that's something Osamu finds beautiful. That's it for this video, guys. If you like this new series, leave a like for the next episode. And subscribe for more Anon content. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.